All right, so in this video, I'm going to be solving the problem 100 to the power of x is equal to 10 to the power of x plus 1 to the power of x. So to solve this, what I'm first going to do is rewrite 100 to the power of x as 10 squared to the power of x. So now this is equal to 10 to the power of x plus 1 to the power of x. Now, if I have something in the form a to the power of m to the power of n, this is equal to a to the power of n to the power of m. So 10 to the power of 2 to the power of x is equal to 10 to the power of x to the power of 2. So now I have 10 to the power of x to the power of 2 is equal to 10 to the power of x plus 1 to the power of x. Now, if I have something in the form, or sorry, 1 to the power of any number is just going to be 1. So we can just get rid of this x as an exponent because it won't really change anything. Now I have 10 to the power of x squared is equal to 10 to the power of x plus 1. And now from here, I'm going to let 10 to the power of x equal to the variable m. So now I have m squared is equal to m plus 1. And this turns into m squared minus m minus 1 is equal to 0. Now I'm going to use the quadratic formula to solve this. So the quadratic formula is negative b plus or minus the square root of b squared minus 4ac all over 2a. So in this case, a is 1, b is negative 1, and c is negative 1. So I get m is equal to negative of negative 1 plus or minus the square root of negative 1 squared minus 4a, is which is 1, times c, which is negative 1, all over 2a, so 2 times 1. And this turns into positive 1 plus or minus the square root of 1 minus, sorry, plus 4 over 2, which is equal to 1 plus or minus the square root of 5 over 2. So this is the value of m. And to be precise, the two values of m are 1 plus the square root of 5 over 2 and 1 minus the square root of 5 over 2. Now, remember how we let m equal 10 to the power of x. So 10 to the power of x is equal to 1 plus the square root of 5 over 2 and 10 to the power of x is also equal to 1 minus the square root of 5 over 2. So for my second equation over here, 10 to the power of x is equal to 1 minus the square root of 5 over 2. Well, 1 minus the square root of 5 over 2 is a negative number. And you can't take the power of a positive number and make it equal negative, meaning there's no solution to this equation. So we are only left with 10 to the power of x is equal to 1 plus the square root of 5 over 2. And to solve this, I'm going to take the log on both sides. So I get log 10 to the power of x is equal to log 1 plus the square root of 5 over 2. And if I have something in the lo form log a to the power of b, I can move the ex exponent b to the front. So this turns into b times log a. So now I have log 10 to the power of x, which I can move x to the front. So I get x times log 10 is equal to the log of 1 plus the square root of 5 over 2. And now I'm going to divide both sides by log 10. So then these two cancel out. And I get x is equal to log of 1 plus the square root of 5 over 2 over log 10. And log 10, if you guys already know, is equal to 1. So this turns to log of 1 plus the square root of 5 over 2 over 1, which is the same thing as log of 1 plus the square root of 5 over 2. There's no need to include the over 1 because anything over 1 is itself. So this is my solution to this equation.
All right, so in this equation, I have x to the power of 4 plus x squared is equal to 20. So to solve this, what I'm going to do is first start by subtracting 20 on both sides so we can have all our terms on one side. So I get x to the power of 4 plus x squared minus 20 is equal to 0. Now this may seem like a quadratic equation, but it's not because we have the power of 4 as our primary term, and then that's led by the power of 2. And in a normal quadratic equation, we have 2 as our primary, then we just have 1, and then we have some constant c. So how are we going to solve this? Well, we can't use the, we can't factor this out by using the quadratic formula because this is not a quadratic equation. So to solve this, what I'm going to do is rewrite this as x to the power of 4 plus x squared minus 16 plus 4. So I rewrote, rewrote 20 as 16 plus 4. And the reason I did this is because negative 16 is the same thing as negative 2 to the power of 4. And negative 4 is the same thing as negative 2 squared. So now notice how I have something in the power of 4 and something in the power of 2. And they're both the same. Now I can put the powers of 4s together and the powers of 2 together. So I get x to the power of 4 minus 2 to the power of 4 plus x squared minus 2 squared is equal to 0. Now 2 to the power of 4 is 16 and 16 is the same thing as 4 squared as well. So I get x to the power of 4 minus 4 squared. And I have this plus x squared minus 2 squared. Now, if I have something in the form a to the power of m times n, this is equal to a to the power of m to the power of n. So x to the power of 4 is the same thing as x to the power of 2 times 2, which is equal to x to the power of 2 to the power of 2. So now I get x to the power of 2 to the power of 2 minus 4 to the power of 2 plus x squared minus 2 squared is equal to 0. Now notice how everything is in the power of 2. And if I have something in the form a squared minus b squared, this is equal to a plus b times a minus b. So we're going to use this property on these two groups. So I first get x squared plus 4 times x squared minus 4 plus x plus 2 times x minus 2 is equal to 0. Now we can use this property again on x squared minus 4 by rewriting as x squared minus 2 squared. So that's going to equal x plus 2 times x minus 2. And I have this plus x plus 2 times x minus 2 is equal to 0. Now I'm going to factor out x minus 2. So I get x minus 2 times x squared plus 4 times x plus 2 plus x plus 2, which is equal to 0. And notice how we can also factor out x plus 2 as well. So, Actually, at the start, what we could have done is just factored x squared minus 4 out. But now we're going to factor out x squared x plus 2 as well. So I get x plus 2 times x minus 2 times x squared plus 4 plus 1 is equal to 0. So x plus 2 times x minus 2, like I said, was x squared minus 4. And I have this times x squared plus 4 plus 1, which is x squared plus 5. Now this is equal to 0. Now this gives me two equations. I get x squared minus 4 is equal to 0. And I get x squared plus 5 is equal to 0. So for x squared minus 4 equals 0, I can add 4 on both sides. So I get x squared is equal to 4. And this is equal to positive or negative 2. And for x squared plus 5 is equal to 0, I get x squared is equal to negative 5. And I get x is equal to positive negative square root of negative 5. 
which is equal to positive negative square root of 5i.